it or fade it. That's right, trade it or fade it. Earnings edition. Let's jump right in. Netflix out with earnings on Wednesday after the bell. Guy, trade it or fade it. You know, you would think I'd say trade it, given my love of Netflix, but it hasn't traded particularly well. It bounced today. The tape was good, but I got to tell you something. The last few months indicate that maybe there's some pain ahead. I love the company, not in the short term. I will fade it, Tyler. Fade it. That's a fade. Let's move on to AT&T reporting on Thursday. Bonwin, trade it or fade it? I'm fading this one. And listen, I, I know that there's an argument to be made that for the catch-up trade and it's had underperformance, I know it's got a strong dividend yield. None of those things are compelling enough reasons for me to overlook the fact that they still struggle with free cash flow. In this environment, I don't want a situation where you're going to have to go to public markets and raise. If you're not generating cash in a meaningful way, I don't have room for you in my portfolio. Tim, telephones for you. Uh, well, I'll tell you Come what, uh, AT&T AT and has been a rough trade. Uh, I think you traded here. I mean, we, we know what's what's happened. They've been they've had their lunch eaten by T-Mobile. If you look at postpaid, though, uh, the entire sector looks like it's in a pretty interesting spot. I think the predatory nature of the sector means that uh, there is uh, an opportunity for the core business to do OK here. And I think the core business is really their ability to pay this monstrous dividend. So um, I think it's a benign setup for the sector. And I think for that, AT&T has been moving higher. All right, Procter & Gamble set to report on Wednesday morning. Trade or fade, Dan? Yeah, I think you can trade this one. I mean, it came down 10% from its August highs here, taking a few turns off that multiple that we all thought was a little bit fat. So you take out the interest and in maybe a name like this for that dividend yield that it has. And, you know, maybe this, this sell-off over the last couple of months has been um, enough. So to me, I think it's fine. I think probably some of the concern about these GLP-1s and some of these consumer staples is probably a little overdone near term. So I'm trading this. Bonwin, uh, are you going to trade or fade? going to roll with the tide on uh, P&G? Right, nicely done. Color me curmudgeon. Uh, <laughs> so I'm fading this one as well. Uh, I just don't know if they have the ability to continue to raise prices. And for the, for the simple fact that the staples have been a richer pocket of the market with a very low beta and low growth. So I just really don't see a compelling reason. Dan's probably right. These have gotten crushed recently, and you may get a bit of a bounce, but I still just in terms of deploying capital, it's not a place I'm looking. All right, let's move on to the next and last but not least is Tesla. It reports on Wednesday afternoon. Trade or fade, Tim? I'm going to fade. Uh, uh, you know, my religion is typically to fade this one. But I, I and it's not because of price cuts. Uh, I think it's first of all, I think auto dynamics are not great. Um, I think it, the the entire sector is addressing some of the profitability issues, even though Tesla's at the top of the heap. Um, charts not bad. Don't like the valuation guy. I agree with everything Tim said, and I'm sure this much to the consternation of people that are long or the bulls of Tesla, but I'm going to say trade it because, to quote the great band The Who, I'm not going to be fooled again with this thing. I've seen it too many times that they report some benign number and the stock's up 8%, so trade it just on the back of that. Yeah, alone. I'm fading this yeah. one, though. If you think about last quarter, and again, the stock was up a lot into that print there, but that was a disappointing quarter. The deliveries were difficult. You know, the, the, um, the numbers in China have not been good in September. They were down 11%, and margins expected to be probably 17 uh, and a half or so. So to me, I think this thing has risk probably down towards those recent lows, uh, 215 or so. Lots of information there. Thanks, guys.